So, السلام عليكم جامعة أفريقيا للعلوم الإنسانية والتطبيقية طرابلس. So, Africa University for Humanities and Applied Sciences. Code for this subject is EN 212. Subject, Spoken English 3 by Abdul Latif Al Alam. English Department, Summer 2020. All rights are reserved. Latif Al Alam. Master's degree, so Abdul Latif Al Alam, Master's in English Language in Applied Linguistics from Libyan Academy for High Studies in 2012. Telephone number 092-517-4855. Email Abdul Latif Al Alam at gmail.com. سواء جامعة أفريقيا للعلوم الإنسانية وتطبيقية طرابلس قسم اللغة الإنجليزية نبدا عن المقرر الدراسي Spoken English 3 أي محادثة ثلاثة الوعاء الزمني للمقرر 48 ساعة في الفصل أي بمعدل 4 ساعات أسبوعيا الأسبقية لهذا المقرر محادثة اثنان مدرس المادة الأستاذ عبد اللطيف العالم قسم اللغة الإنجليزية أهداف المقرر واحد تمكين الطالب من فهم وكتابة جمل نحوية صحيحة اثنان زيادة الثقة لدى الطالب لخوض حوارات بأكثر جرأة ثلاثة تهيئة الطالب للمستوى المتقدم في اللغة الإنجليزية أربعة تنمية المهارات الشفوية لدى الطالب وتمكينه من استهلال الحوار مخرجات التعلم المستهدفة ألف المعرفة والفهم واحد يتعرف الطالب على مصطلحات وألفاظ جديدة للثقافة والحياة في المجتمع الإنجليزي اثنان يتذكر الطالب الإحداث الأحداث المهمة التي مرت به في حياته والقدرة على وصفها ثلاثة يعدد الطالب المواد التي درسها سابقا وذكر ميوله لأي مادة أربعة يصف الطالب الأشخاص المحيطين حسب انتماءاتهم العرقية أو المجتمعية مخرجات التعلم المستهدفة باء المهارات الذهنية واحد يميز الطالب بعض الأشخاص في بريطانيا من خلال ملامحهم ونوع ولون ملابسهم اثنان يقترح الطالب على الغير الانضمام لأندية رياضية أو ترفيهية ثلاثة يميز الطالب بين الإنجليزية الأمريكية والإنجليزية البريطانية أربعة يقارن الطالب بين الدراسة الجامعية والدراسة الثانوية السابقة من مخرجات التعلم المستهدفة جيم المهارات العلمية والمهنية واحد يستخدم الطالب هنا القواميس بالإنجليزية فقط اثنان يصف الطالب الصور والمناظر الطبيعية باستعمال ما درسه سابقا ثلاثة يميز الطالب بين ميوله وطموحه وبين المواد التي ينبغ دراستها في الجامعة أربعة يؤدي الطالب داخل القاعة العديد من الأدوار الافتراضية التي يتطلبها الدرس كورس ماتيريالز نمبر 1 فولوين فيديوز نمبر 2 The textbook that we having, we are having, sorry, this book, which is Communicate Listening and Speaking Skills, number one, by Kate Bickering from Macmillan. Course requirements, midterm 40 marks, and final exam 60 marks. The contents that we are we're going to cover, inshallah, uh, for the lecture number one, or first lecture, the topic, unit one, meeting up. In second lecture, inshallah, uh, unit two, life choices. Third lecture, we are going to have unit three, unit three, study abroad. 
In fourth lecture, we are going to have unit four, shopping. Fifth lecture, we are going to have unit six, free time. Sixth lecture, we are going to have unit seven, the title for this topic here, the hard sell. In seventh lecture, we are going to have unit eight, the title, studying. In eighth lecture, we are going to have unit nine, getting around. Ninth lecture, we are going to have unit 11, eating out. Tenth lecture, we are going to have unit 12, title, young workers. We have a note here, ملاحظة. So, هذه المحاضرات ما هي إلا تعليم عن بعد للاستفسار والتواصل الدخول إلى المنصة الإلكترونية وإرسال رسالة البريد الإلكتروني. First lecture, محاضرة الأولى. Title, Meeting Up, which is page eight. So, unit one, Meeting Up, vocabulary, describing people. Number one. Label the people in the pictures using words from the phrase bank. Phrase bank, this is the list for phrase bank. We usually have phrase bank on each page, and we use the words in a phrase bank to answer the different exercises in the same page. So each page has its own phrase bank. Now, these pictures, number one, describing this person according to her style of her hair, and according to the color or something in her clothes so what do we say about this young girl and about this number two and about number three young man and number four let's use the words in phrase bank here we have goth skater heavy emo number one so we can describe this girl as a goth in England uh, this kind of uh, group of people using black colors and a uh, special style of their hair, they call themselves moth. Number two, we call this girl as an emo, emo. Right? Why do they call themselves emo? Because of the style of their hair and it seems to they, w they want to hide their sadness. Number three, this young man is to be called skater because of the style of his clothes and the style of his hair and usually faded color of their jeans and they usually like to skate and so on. Number four, this kind of young man, they usually call themselves as a heavy. Exercise two, we have CD here. Listen to one of the people from one here, from these people. The question, identify the speaker. Who is the speaker from the four people here? Complete, and then you complete the, the description in speech bubble. Here, you complete it. We have two missing words. He is saying, some people say, I'm quite completed. Take your pen and dry. I'm really into, into here, it means uh, really into it means I like verb to be really into it means I like something you complete it right now first we listen unit one vocabulary exercise two I suppose I'm a bit of a heavy some people say I'm quite fun loving I'm really into heavy metal music so who is the person here it must be number four the heavy or a heavy person. What does he say here? Some people say I'm quite fun loving. And then he said I'm really into uh, heavy metal music. Even the kind of music he likes to play is called heavy metal music. Right. Number three. Read adjectives from no, uh, number one up to number four. Adjectives here. Dependable. Lazy. Quiet, and number four, organized. The question, find an antonym. An antonym means an opposite for these uh, adjectives. For each one in the phrase bank, 
phrase bank on the left. You can find, sorry, you can find your answer for this exercise here in this list, the second group. Maybe introvert, made, outgoing, unreliable, messy, and so on. Number one, the adjective dependable. Dependable means a person you can depend on. The antonym for this adjective means the opposite for this. Here from this list, try to check the opposite from this or these words. Here, unreliable. It's the opposite or the antonym for dependable. Two, lazy. The antonym for this word or this adjective is hardworking. Three, quiet. The antonym or the opposite for this is here from the list. It's outgoing. Outgoing. Number four, organized person. The opposite from the list, right here. Here we check the uh, this one, messy. Number four, we listen to number three. Use the adjectives from number three here. The adjectives we have, these adjectives and the adjectives in the spaces. Use them to complete this description here, describing a text. Someone is talking here, is saying, my brother, he does okay at school, he is quite what? Because he is always in his room studying. Listen, check your brain, and complete spaces. Listen. Unit one. Vocabulary. Exercise four. My brother, he does okay at school. He's quite hard working. Hard working. He's always in his room studying. He's also really into basketball, which I can't stand. What else? Um, well, he's quite reserved. He's not an introvert but he's not what I'd call outgoing. Um, but you can rely on him. If he says he'll do something, then he does it. He's very dependable. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. His room's a disaster. He doesn't lose stuff, but he's really, really messy. Messy. Messy, the last word is messy. Okay, let's see. Right, number five. Look at the words below here. Right. Uh, a positive sign, it means something good, or a negative sign, it means something not good, to indicate which are positive and which are negative. For example, a good mate, something nice, good, positive, right? Now, we carry on. Now, what do you think of this word? Relaxed, relaxed person, what do you think? Is it something positive or negative? It's up to you. Some people, they say a relaxed person is something nice, positive. Others, they say no. Strict person. What do you think of a strict person? Some people, they say it's something not nice, negative. A real love. A real love, a funny person. Some people, they say it's positive. It's up to, to you, right? A pain person. Here, pain is an adjective. Right? A pain. I think it's negative. Negative sign. Understanding must be positive. Number six, listening here. Listen to six speakers describing people. Choose a word from five here. Good mate or relaxed or strict, real love, a pain or understanding. Uh, choose a word from five for each person. For example, uh, the first part of the CD. He's talking or she's talking about a person. That person must be what? A pain. Second person must be what? Choose from here. Right? Listen. Unit 1. Vocabulary. Exercise 4. My brother, he does okay at school. No, not this one. Hard working. He's always. Not this one. Sorry. Unit 1. Vocabulary. Exercise 6. 1. My little sister's a complete nightmare. She's always coming in my room and getting me into trouble with our parents. A pain. 2. Sophie's my best friend. She's a really nice person and, you know, someone you can trust. She's always there for me. Good mate. 3. I like spending time with my gran and she always has time for me. She doesn't get stressed like mom and dad. Relaxed. 
before. If I have a problem, I normally talk to my dad's sister. She's younger than my parents, and she knows what it's like to be 17. Understanding. Five. My dad, well, he doesn't like me wearing makeup, and he's always nagging me about my schoolwork and what time I have to be home at night. Six. Six. I usually hang out with a group of other skaters. We all get on well, and we always have a good time together. My best mate is Benny. He's a really funny guy. Real love. Okay, let's go to the next page. Sorry. Speaking. Discussing relationships, number one. Listen to four dialogues. Match them to the photos. Dialogue one, which photo? Is it A or B or C or D? All right, so we listen and we write the number of the picture. Listen. Unit one, speaking. Exercise one. Dialogue one. Eda, this is Claire. Claire studies at York with Danny. Hi, Claire. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you too. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Peter. So, are you one of Danny's judo friends? No, I'm not really into sport. Claire and Danny are on the same course. What about you? How do you know Danny? Me? I'm his brother. D. Picture D. Dialogue 2. Oh, my goodness. Um, everything about me in just one minute. Uh, let me see. Well, my name's Rebecca. I'm in my first year at university. I'm a vegetarian. I'm really into healthy living. I do yoga. Um, I can't stand smoking, but apart from that, I think I'm quite an understanding person. I'm a good listener. I'm at university. Oh, no, <laughs> I told you that already. Oh, dear. Um, I'm not a very organized person. A bit messy. <laughs> You. That was really difficult. Uh, your turn. Si. Dialogue three. So, how do you know Charlie? Charlie? Oh, I've known him for ages. We met through a mutual friend. And? And what? I can't know. What does he do? What's he like? Has he got a girlfriend? Let's see. He works in computers. He's a nice guy, dependable. Unit one, speak. Unit one, speaking. Exercise one. Dialogue one. Peter, this is Claire. Claire studies at York with Danny. Hi, Claire. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you too. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Peter, so are you one of Danny's judo friends? No, I'm not really into sport. Claire and Danny are on the same course. What about you? How do you know Danny? Me? I'm his brother. So D. Dialogue 2. Oh, my goodness. Um, everything about me in just one minute. Uh, let me see. Well, my name's Rebecca. I'm in my first year at university. I'm a vegetarian. I'm really into healthy living. I do yoga. Um, I can't stand smoking, but apart from that, I think I'm quite an understanding person. Right. So, dialogue one... Sorry. Dialogue one is picture D. Dialogue two is picture C. Dialogue three is picture A and dialogue 4 is picture B right now next exercise 2A put the dialogue in the correct order now this is a dialogue about this picture we want to put it in order number 1 up to number 8 number 1 is done for you it's here this is the first uh, sentence or speech here Anna first speaker sorry Peter this is a clear Claire studies at York with Danny. Who's number two here from the list? Give it two. Who's the three? Who's four? Up to number eight. Right? Now we listen again and we give them numbers. 
Unit 1. Speaking. Exercise 1. Dialogue 1. Peter, this is Claire. Claire studies at York with Danny. Hi, Claire. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you, too. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Peter. So, are you one of Danny's judo friends? No, I'm not really into sport. Claire and Danny are on the same course. What about you? How do you know Danny? Me? I'm his brother. Right. Exercise number three. Yeah. Use the words from the phrase bank. This phrase bank. This one. Right. To complete A to C. A, B, C. Right? In the different ways. What can we say? Uh, we met through, for example, here, yeah, what, what can we say? We met through mutual friends, for example. What else? We met through a girl from my class, so on. As an example, right? What else? B. I am one of his friends, or I am one of his Jude friends, right? What else? I am one of his neighbors, I can say that, or I am one of his classmates, so on. As an example, C. She is just a girl from class. She is just a girl from class. What else? She is just a classmate. We can say she is just a classmate, right? Or she is just someone I know. She is just someone I know. Okay, what else? Yeah? Language note. When we introduce a new person to a friend, we say, Hi, this is, for example, Jaffe. Or, let me introduce you to Jaffe. Alright? Alright. But we don't say, I present you to Jaffe. No, it's wrong. I present you Jaffe now. Pronunciation. This diff diphthong in phonetics, uh, it's pronounced as A. A. Listen to the words and note the A sound. Right? Listen. Right? Listen here. Unit 1. Pronunciation. Exercise A. Mate. Skater. 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 So, made, skate, or skater. A. Right. B. Read the words. How would you pronounce them here? Nay. Neighbor. Lazy. Right. Play. Pain. Right. Listen. Unit 1. Pronunciation. Exercise C. Neighbor. Lazy. Play. Pain. Listening. Social networking. Number one. Do you or your friends use any of these social networking sites? If not, which do you use? This is a website, they call it MySpace, Twitter, Pebble, uh, 20, and so on. Which one? I think uh, Twitter. Most of people they use this. Two. You are going to listen to an expert explaining how to set up a social networking account. Before you listen, predict the correct alternatives or alternative for sentences 1 to 8. For example, so when you want to set up an account, Number one, the first thing to do is what? Well, set up a website or go to a website. Of course, we go to a website like Facebook. Two, then we say click on the register button or create. Of course, we click on. Three, the next step is to upload an account or create an account. Okay. What do you think? Create an, an account for yourself. Number four, you need to choose a password or click a password. Hmm? 
choose a password of course next step you also need to join your email address or confirm your email address confirm your email address number six the website will probably ask you to set up a security question or confirm set up of course a security question right number seven once you have done that you upload a photo or set a photo of course upload eight and then or join a forum or upload a forum join right now listen to the first part of the interview and check check your answers let's, let's listen listening exercise three okay Richard well a lot of our older listeners are a bit unsure as to how to get started with social networking now I myself am a bit of a technophobe how easy is it to sign up with Facebook or MySpace or one of these sites? Well, it's really very easy. Let me talk you through it. Okay, then. Let's give it a go. Well, the first thing you have to do is go to a website, for example, Facebook, then click on the register button. Okay, that sounds easy enough. Right. And the next step is to create an account for yourself. You then need to choose a password and you also need to confirm your email address. The website will probably ask you to set up a security question to remind you of your password in case you forget it. Okay, then what? Once you've done the above, you can upload a photo of yourself and add some personal information to complete your profile. And what kind of things can I do once I have my account? Well, social networking is a great way to keep in touch with your current friends and get back in touch with people you used to know. A lot of people use it as an alternative to, say, writing emails or calling people. And, of course, it saves you saying the same thing over and over to different people. Okay. Anything else? Well, that's really up to you. Some people upload photos and videos and create photo albums. You can create groups and events or join a forum to share opinions about something you're interested in. And of course, you can use the chat room. Sort of instant messaging? Exactly. Okay, well, there's certainly a lot of interesting possibilities there. All right, exercise four. Listen to the second part of the interview and answer the questions in your own words. So, we usually read questions. According to Patrick, what is the difference between the way young people and adults use social networking sites? Two, what does Patrick say about social networking and young people's social interaction? Three, what's Patrick's main concern about social networking sites? Four, why does Richard suggest that we shouldn't be too worried about young people using social networking sites. These are the questions. Try to understand them and then listen and take a pen and write your answers here. Right? Listen. Unit one. Exercises four and five. Okay, so Richard and I are being joined here in the studio by Patrick Hammond, a child psychologist based here in London. Patrick, do you consider yourself to be up to date with things like social networking? Well, yes. On a personal level, I'm one of over 20 million active Facebook users. And as an adult, I don't see a problem with that. My concern is the effect on children using these sites, particularly after the results of a recent study. Right. That's the Ofcom study. So, Patrick, could you tell us something about that? Well, nearly half of 8 to 17-year-olds in Britain have an online profile today. Wow, as many as that. And are they using the same sites as adults? Yes, but not in the same proportions. Facebook is by far the most popular site with adults. But with young people, Bebo tops the table. 
with 63% of profiles. And that's not the only difference. Really? So how else do they differ? Well, for me, a significant factor is that around 60% of young people use social networking as a way of making friends. With adults, the figure stands at around 17%. So 60% of young people and only 17% of adults, how far do you think that's a problem? Well, I certainly think it's changing the way young people interact. I suppose you're right. Okay, so what's your opinion on that? Well, I'm not sure that's altogether a good thing. But for me, the most worrying thing the survey showed was the lack of parental control over what children do online. 33%, that's a third of all parents, say they set no rules at all for their children's use of social networks. And I think that's a pretty dangerous thing and really quite irresponsible. Richard, can I bring you in at this point? What do you think about children and social networking? Is Patrick right to be concerned? Well, yes and no. I think he's certainly right to be concerned about young children using these sites with no control or supervision. But we mustn't forget that being comfortable using computers for this type of virtual interaction is very much part of our life today and a life skill I feel all young people should learn. Right. After listening now... You should work on this exercise and answer the questions. Number five. So after listening, you can practice listening again, and then you complete these sentences. Number one. Number of active Facebook users. He said it's about 20 million. 20 million active Facebook users. So we write here 20 million. Two. Age of the young people in this study. Young people from uh, the age eight. To 17. This is the answer. Three. Proportion of young people in Britain with an online profile percent. He said 50%. Four. Percentage of young people with a people profile percentage here. He said 63%. Five. Proportion of adults using social networking to make friends percentage here. He said 17%. 17%. This is the answer. Six. Proportion of parents who don't supervise their children's social networking. Here, the percentage he said, 33. We write 33%. Right? Functional language, opinions. Number one. Complete the sentences from the interview about social networking using expressions from the phrase bank. Here we are. We have phrase bank. What's your opinion on? Could you tell us something about? Do you consider yourself to be? What do you think about? How far do you think that's? And so on. We use these expressions to complete these spaces. Number one, for example, here we have Patrick Hammond is a child uh, is a child psychologist based on, uh, here in London. Patrick, up to date with things like social networking, use an expression here from the phrase bank. Right? That's after we have listened to the CD. Right? Which we have listened to. Uh, we listened to that uh, in the last lecture. Right, in the first lecture. Now we summarize. So, what can we say here in this space? So, Patrick Hammond is a child psychologist based here in London. So, Patrick, do you consider yourself to be, we can say that, do you consider yourself to be up to date with things like social networking? Two, right. That's the Ofcom study. So, Patrick, what did the interviewer say here? Right. If you don't remember, uh, we can say, 
could you tell us something about? So, could you tell us something about that? Again, if you don't know the answers, you can go back to the CD in the last lecture. And something else, at the end of this unit, you will find the answer key. Two, right, uh, sorry, three. So, 60% of young people and only 17% of adults, so, 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 a problem. Uh, how far do you think that's a problem? Okay. How far do you think that's a problem? Four. I suppose you are right. Okay. So, what do we say here? So, what's your opinion on? What's your opinion on that? Five. Richard. Can I bring you in at this point? Okay, what did the interviewer say here? Mm -hmm. What do you think about children? What do you think about children and social networking? Anyway, they are here and on the CD in the last lecture and on the answer base at the end of this unit. Two, read the questions. Match an answer A to E. Here are these answers, A to E, to each question here. Of course, again, this is from the interview on the CD. One, could you, could you tell us something about the different social groups in your school? So what do you think the answer is? Is it well, I know, so, so, or no, I think, or me? No. Or D, let's see, or E. That's an interesting question. Uh, so the answer here for this question is D. It's D, anyway. It's D here, D. Let's see. There is a quite big group of gods in uh, our year and quite a lot of rappers and skaters. And the rest, well, they are just uh, kind of normal or sporty. Two, do you consider yourself to be a member of a particular social group? What's the answer here? Look at C. Me? No, I don't think so. This is the suitable answer. Three. How far do you think that dressing like other people is a type of a uniform or of uniform? What's the answer for this? Number three, it's E. That's an interesting question. I guess it's a way of showing you belong to a group. Four, what do you think about young people having to wear school uniform? What's the answer for this? Look at me. Now, I think that's ridiculous. I do not want to wear some horrible tartan skirt. It's a suitable answer for this question. Five, what's your opinion on the restrictions on the use of hijab and other religious symbols in schools? The answer for this, of course, it's A. Well, I don't really see what, what the problem is. I don't think the school should interfere in personal things like religion. All right, practice reading the dialogue in two. This dialogue, try to read it many times. Four, think of how you would answer the questions in two. So it would be better if someone reads the question for you and you try to think of the answer. Five, work and press, ask and answer the question. Right, strategy. A, when someone asks for your opinion, use words such as well, to indicate that you are thinking about the reasons, okay? B, underline words or phrases that the speaker, that the speaker in two here uses to delay their responses, right? Okay. What else here? Uh, here, we, he, the speaker used, now, me, what else, also he used, let's see, also he used, well, that's, uh, that's uh, an interesting question, yeah, here, he said, that's an interesting question. Let's see, right? Well, so these phrases, the speakers 
usually used to delay their response or their answer and to give themselves a the time to think. Culture. Uniforms are very popular in Britain schools or in British schools, sorry. Uniforms like what we see here. This is or these are for males and these uniforms for females. Right? Teachers and parents believe that it reduces, reduces, makes down, yeah? reduces aggression. Aggression means attacks and, mm, and rivalry among students. That's their opinion. All right, so again, this is a picture of students in Britain with their uniform, male uniform and female uniform. Right, let's go to the next page. Sorry. Here, final task. Asking someone's opinion. Look at this picture. It's a situation between, let's say, maybe a headmaster in a school and a parent. And they are talking about a file of a student in a school. It must be her son. Right? The headmaster is saying here, could you tell me something about, maybe about your son or something. Do you consider your son to be something from the file? and the mother is saying something maybe that her son is working hard maybe until late at night or something like that she thinks number one look at the cartoon here try to predict how the teacher's questions might end right the questions here what's the end of the question here how to finish it with what words and then we listen and check Right, let's check. Unit one. Final task. Exercises one and three. Could you tell me something about how your son spends his free time? Yes, of course. Well, he normally goes on the internet when he gets home from school and I have heard him tapping on Yeah. Yeah. Unit one. Final task. Exercises one and three. Could you tell me something about how your son spends his free time? Yes, of course. Well, he normally goes on the internet when he gets home from school and I have heard him tapping on his keyboard till late at night, perhaps until one o'clock in the morning. Mrs. James, do you consider your son to be a good student? Oh, yes. He always tells me that he's done his homework. I see. And how often do you check he has uh, done his homework? Well, to be honest, I'm very busy and don't have a lot of time to... Mrs. James, what's your opinion on letting teenagers organize their own time? I think it's a good idea, isn't it? Mrs. James, do you consider your son to be an internet addict? No, of course not. Well, yes, I suppose so. Mm. What types of things do you think I could do to change his routine? Uh, you could try controlling his access to the Internet. <gasps> mm -hmm. After listening to the CD, we can say that the finish or the end for the first question, could you tell me something about your son? Do you consider your son to be a good student? And so on. Right. Exercise two. Exercise two. Let's see. Yeah, it says, match the questions to the answers questions here and the answers here and the question here also so first match the questions to the answers one what types of things right what types of things mm -hmm. does the parent P or teacher T ask each question 
right? So look at the first. Look at the first number one, and we'll see what types of things do you think I could do to change his routine. So what type of things? Here we write C. C. This is the end of this question. Yeah. The question complete. What types of things do you think I could do to change his routine? We write C here. And who said this question? What types of things do you think I could do to change his routine? Is it the parent, the mother here, or the teacher? What do we write here? T or P? What types of things do you think I could do to change his routine? Actually, parent. We write P here. The parent said this question. Q. How often do you... What do we write here? It must be this one. How often do you check he has done his homework? Again, we write here A first. Uh, sorry, yeah, A. How often do you check he has done his homework? So A, here we write A. And then we write, who said this? Is it the parent, the mother, or the teacher T? Actually, T, the teacher. The teacher said, how often do you check he, check he has done his homework? T, the teacher said this. Three, what's your opinion on B? We write B here. What's your opinion on letting teenagers organize their own time? Who said this? It's the teacher. T. We write T. Right? Listen again and check your answers. Let's listen. Pronunciation. Exercise B. Is your partner a good student? Okay, yeah. Right, sorry. Yeah. Final task. Exercises one and three. Okay, yes. Could you tell me something about how your son spends his free time? Yes, of course. Well, he normally goes on the internet when he gets home from school, and I have heard him tapping on his keyboard till late at night, perhaps until one o'clock in the morning. Mrs. James, do you consider your son to be a good student? Oh, yes. He always tells me that he's done his homework. Yeah, I see. And how often do you check he has done his homework? Well, to be honest, I'm very busy and don't have a lot of time to... Mrs. James, what's your opinion on letting teenagers organize their own time? Yeah. I think it's a good idea, isn't it? Mrs. James, do you consider your son to be an internet addict? No, of course not. Well, yes, I suppose so. Mm. What types of things do you think I could do to change his routine? Oh, uh, yeah. You could try controlling his access to the internet. <gasps> mm -hmm. Right. After we have checked our answers, now number four, work in pairs to interview a partner about their opinions, decide who is a student A and student B, then read your rules, roles. So student A and student B, it must be you and one of your colleagues or classmates. You are the teacher of a student who doesn't study enough and you have to ask the parents' opinion about the issue below. Prepare your questions, for example. One, possibly restricting access to the internet at home to certain hours. Two, possibly limiting use of electronic games. Three, possibly restricting time he spends with his friends or with friends. And student B, you are the parent of a student who doesn't study enough and you want to defend your son or daughter but you don't want to appear irresponsible prepare your response so one is the teacher asking questions about these topics or issues and the other is the mother or the parent answering and trying not to be irresponsible right try to do this with one of your classmates pronunciation 
questions A. Read the questions below. Does it require an open response or a yes no response? Right. Is your partner a good student? What does it require, this question? Of course, we write it requires uh, yes no response. You should answer with yes or no because we start with an auxiliary with the helping verb is. Is your partner a good student? So you find yourself to answer with yes or no. So that kind of an answer we, we say, yes, no response. And this kind of a question, we call it yes, no question. B, listen to the question. Does the intonation now rise or fall at the end of the question? Listen. Unit 1. Pronunciation. Exercise B. Is your partner a good student? It rises at the end. Rise at the end. It rises. Again, listen again. Unit 1. Pronunciation. Exercise B. Is your partner a good student? Is your partner a good student? So at the end, the intonation of the voice is rising because it's just no question. Okay, let's go to the next page. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, yes, we are here. Vocabulary. One, read the adjectives in the list and divide them into positive and negative qualities. So the adjective you think it's nice, it's good, you write bluff right to show that it's positive and the one you think it's not nice it's not good you write uh, minds to show that it's negative something not nice right we start with the first dependable I think it's positive so we write loss hard working I think it's nice we write positive loss lazy of course nice or negative negative adjective messy I think it's negative Organized, ah, it's something nice, positive, right? Outgoing, outgoing, people like outgoing persons, so positive. Quiet, some people they consider it negative, quiet. Relaxed, it's something nice, positive. Strict, some people they say it's negative, we don't like a strict person. Unreliable person, of course, negative. All right. Now, so, so the first, read the adjectives in the list and divide them into positive and negative qualities too. Now, complete the dialogue here. The dialogue work in pairs. One student says the adjective from this, and the other student says the opposite, or what we call it. The antonym, the antonym adjective. For example, what's the opposite of dependable here? The answer should be the opposite of dependable. Uh, I think uh, it's a dependable, unreliable. This one, unreliable. So dependable, unreliable. Now carry on. You and one of your classmates, one ask a question, for example, about hard working. What's the opposite of hard working the answer the opposite of hard working I think it's something like messy or lazy let's say lazy sorry the opposite of hard working is lazy what's the opposite of messy the answer the opposite of messy I think it's organized what's the opposite of outgoing the answer, the opposite of outgoing, I think it's uh, quiet. Let's continue. What's the opposite of relaxed? So the opposite of relaxed, I think it's strict. All right, three. Uh, think of someone you both know. One student says three adjectives to describe that person. The other student must guess who it is. For example, one of your groups or one of your classmates, one says he is or she is so, 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 using this adjective. 
and the other students should say he is or she is and mention his name or her name right number four cross out cross it means cross it's not hmm? cross out the word that doesn't collocate collocate means uh, we don't use it with with the verbs in blue now we use these words or one of these words or two of these words with this verb click on in the computer we say click on a button of course what else we say click on a link yes we say click on a link what else click on a forum no we don't say click on a forum so forum cancel cancel cross or cancel choose what do we say choose a password yes we say choose a password choose a security question yes we say that choose a blog no on the internet we don't say choose a blog so cross cancel cross it we don't use it upload to send using the computer upload a photo yes we say it upload a video send a video yes we say it upload a blog no we don't say that cross it cancel join join a forum yes we say join a forum on the internet join a link no we don't say that cross it cancel join a social networking site yes we say that create create a profile yes about yourself for example a profile yes we say that create a photo album yes we say that create a photo album create a button no we don't say that cross it pronunciation number five underline the a this is the song sound in sentences one to four one i want to create a social networking account right where is a it's here create a create so underlining here in the letter a create two my friends and i use my space to organize parties where is a it's here space underline letter a three i've never met anyone through speed dating they dating underline a here four i've got 80 friends on facebook facebook where is a it's here letter a underline it listen and check we listen exercise six one I want to create a social networking account two my friends and I use myspace to organize parties three I've never met anyone through speed dating four I've got 80 friends on Facebook right functional language number seven uh, put words in the correct order to make questions what do we start with in section a or a question a two or we start with do of course we start with do we say do you consider yourself to be do you consider yourself to be we write it here do you consider yourself to be starting a question course B what do we start with we start with the auxiliary could could you tell us something about could you tell us something about we write it here again could you tell us something about C we start with WH question what what's your opinion on so what's your opinion on what's your opinion on D we start with what w question what so the question here must be what do you think about what do you think about what do you think about we write it here what do you think about eight now these questions are not uh, finishing we finish them with these expressions expressions sorry or sentences here complete the questions in seven here with the phrases here a protecting the hours that teenagers spend on the internet what do we use this we use this for sentence 
number C here. Uh, what's your opinion on restricting? So we come here, here, what's your opinion on restricting? We write A. What's your opinion on restricting the hours that teenagers spend on the internet? Next. Uh, look at B here. Could you tell us something about the different ways you use computers? Uh -huh. Could you tell us something about, and then we write here B. So sentence B for sentence B, the same. Could you tell us something about the different ways you use computers? Okay, C. Uh, where do we use C now? Look at here D. What do you think? What do you think about? What do you think about people downloading and using and videos? So we write here. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think about people? Here, C. We write C. So D, here we write C. What do you think about people downloading music and videos? Here we write C. C. Right. Now the last uh, completion. Computer letters. Computer letters. It's for the first sentence. Here we write D. The question is to be Do you consider yourself to be computer literate? Literate. Literate here means uh, well known. You know a lot. You know a lot about something. Computer literate, it means you know a lot about computer. Do you consider yourself to be computer literate? So we write here for the first sentence, we write D. D. Do you consider yourself to be computer literate? All right. And here on the right, the phrase bank for phrases, sentences, and words that we may use to complete these exercises, right? And that's the end for unit one, lecture number two. Now let's go to the next page. Have a look for the model answer page. Yeah, this is the model answer page for the whole of unit one. Yeah, everything in unit one answers are here, right? As you see, unit one vocabulary page number four. Sorry. Uh, vocabulary page number four, exercise one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then page that starts with speaking, page five. Here are the answers one and two and so on, and three and four and five. And then page six, listening, page six. These are the answers. Right. And then functional language, page seven. Here are the answers, and then answers for pronunciation, and then review page number nine, page number right, nine, sorry, review page that we have just finished. Here are the answers from one to number eight, right? Eight A, and then D, C, and D, right? Number nine is students' own answers, right? That's the end, and that's everything for Unit 1, second lecture, and first lecture as well, of course. Thank you very much. See you.